So I've been wanting to work on a project for a while now to uh, make the wall in my office look a little awesomer. And I'm fascinated by these uh, raised panels, this, these kind of uh, things that you might see in a castle that uh, is just super beautiful. So I decided I was going to take a crack at building a raised panel wall in my office for just one of the walls, kind of an accent wall kind of thing. Uh, so lots of steps here. I'm going to just zip through a lot of it, but uh, I ended up starting with some uh, nine-quarter uh, lumber, and so I'm just resawing it down here. Uh, so you can see here, I'm. these are going to become the panels, so they're, they're eventually going to be book matched, so I'm kind of label, labeling everything so that once I cut them apart, I know which pieces go with which. And because my uh, table saw doesn't have a, uh, the capacity to take a, a larger blade, uh, I ended up uh, having to cut these guys in half the rest of the way by hand. I do have a bandsaw, uh, but it hates me, and I, I can't get it set up properly so that it makes good straight cuts. Uh, I hate it so much. Uh, <laughs> I've watched tons of videos, and I just can't figure out how to make it work. Um, so here I am just manually sawing these things in half. Turns out it doesn't actually take uh, a really long time uh, once you do most of the work with the, with the table saw uh, to just cut them all the way through. And this is what they look like. Uh, this one ended up having a knot in the middle that you can't really uh, can't really see very good from the outside but I guess those are the brakes um, and then I went over to the joiner to get one side uh, clean and, and flat uh, I hadn't originally planned on uh, uh, thickness planing these I thought that I would need the material in order to I, I thought I would lose too much thickness if I did that and so so I just wanted to keep that inside edge uh, and so I jointed it probably would have been easier to joint the other side since it didn't have that funny bump from where I had done the hand sawing. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I did end up actually thickness planing, so this was probably a wasted step. But uh, the other thing is my joiner is only a six inch joiner, and these, these boards are slightly more than six inches. So I kind of had to cheat a little bit on the edges, but that, that ended up being okay because I, uh, I was going to cut a taper on all the, the ends anyway to get this wall looking to get the wall done, right? And you'll see that in a minute here. At the end of the day, I ended up having to make about 60 panels, uh, which is, feels like a lot of panels. Uh, so uh, each one of these, I had to do two per. Uh, so two of these half panels per, per thing. And the, the final dimensions were, were something like 10 and a half or 11 inches uh, of, these, of these panels wide by I don't remember, 13, 14 inches tall. Uh, and here they all are, numbered. Uh, so I've got them labeled so that I can open them up and have the, the book matching work. So now it's time to cut things to final width. So five and a half inches wide. So my, my combined width, once, once I glue them up, will be 11 inches. Uh, and so I'm just cutting them to size here to get ready for the final glue up. Five and a half inches. And the ones that you can see on the screen here aren't even half of all the ones that I had to do. So certainly are a lot of panels uh, to get pulled together to fill up one wall. Uh, the wall end up, ended up being uh, 10 panels wide by six panels high. So I needed 60 panels. Uh, and the panels go in between rails and styles, kind of like on a, a door, cabinet door or something like that. So. So you'll see me making the rails and styles here in a minute. And so I just repeated this process a, a whole bunch of times until I had things like I wanted them. And then I did, like I said, end up going through and thickness planing everything uh, to get everything down to a uniform thickness. That ended up being a little bit easier to, to do the glue up if I had all the edges or had all the thicknesses the same. 
<clears throat> this is that same kind of ugly board with the uh, the knot on the inside. Most of this lumber is actually really clear. Uh, it just worked out that this one happened to be uh, the ugly one. Uh, I think the biggest uh, kind of most underrated clamp uh, out there is is blue tape, uh, particularly for these panel glue ups. So what you can do here is if you'll if you'll just tape your there's some stretch in that blue tape, so you can you can just tape it down, stretch that tape out, and it actually uses, uh, it actually provides quite a lot of clamping pressure. Uh, and that's, to me, I don't have nearly enough clamps to glue up 60 panels, but this tape, uh, one roll was, was more than enough to get the whole thing taped up. And so you tape up one side and then you flip it over and put glue on the, the inside. Uh, you need less glue than you think as a rule. Uh, and so uh, it's not super necessary that you you go in and, and spread out the glue like this, but I do because I'm uh, it makes me happy. <laughs> uh, this is probably a waste of time doing this, uh, but the idea here is that you want to get glue on on all the bits of both sides so that you can uh, have good coverage and and uh, get these panels glued up right. And then when you when you flip it over, you get a little bit of squeeze out, uh, which tells you that you did a good job. Uh, but it's important to get that stuff cleaned up before it dries, otherwise it just becomes a problem. Uh, so, uh, so uh, having a damp sponge that you can just wipe that glue off with, with a, a little basin of water, ends up being super super helpful. Uh, and once you get that. Uh, cleared up then you can you can just position each panel so that you're nice and flush on the good side uh, and repeat and so uh, there's a good side and a bad side on all of these and so you always start by the bad side first and you put your glue and then you lay it down tape it up wipe off the extra glue and lay it aside keep your work space real clean and and you're good to go. Um, so then came cutting the actual raised panel part. Uh, you can do this with a hand plane. That's how I've done it in the past. This is the first time I've ever uh, tried to do this using a uh, table saw. Uh, so I made this little jig here. Put the blade at nine degrees. Uh, that seemed to be uh, about the right angle. That made it look like about like I wanted. Um, and so here I'm just going around all four uh, edges of each panel, getting it clamped firmly into place on the uh, little jig that I cooked up so we don't have any problems with kickback or, or any risk of slicing off my fingers or anything like that. So, so that's pretty great. The key thing here turned out to be having a nice sharp saw blade. Uh, with these long, long cuts, uh, it's super easy to get scorch marks on your, uh, on your boards. Uh, that you have to sand out and plane out later, uh, which is a huge amount of work. So uh, having a, a brand new blade on there uh, turned out to be a really, really important detail of this work. And that's one down. And now 59 more to go. And that, that jig there just slides over the top of my fence. It's got a little bit of play in it. It wobbles side to side a little bit, which I think is okay. I, I suppose it would be nice if it were a little bit more stable. But at the end of the day, uh, I just held it in the same place every time and it seemed to work okay. Uh, different views here of getting the rails and styles cut, uh, getting everything cut down to size, uh, and then getting a slot cut down the sides. Some of these will stay very long and be the styles, and then others will be cut short uh, to be the rails going across between the panels. Uh, so, so there you go, you can see how that's done. I think I'm using a, uh, 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 just a stack dado cutter to, to cut that groove, and that, that's a groove that's about the right size for, um, 
for the edges of these panels that, that I've put together here. Then I've got all these saw marks on the edges of these panels, which need to be cleaned up. Uh, sanding these would be a big mistake, right? Because the sanders, the power sanders anyway, will end up breaking all of those nice sharp corners. Uh, so really the only way to do a good job at this is to just hand plane it, right? Get a nice sharp plane, uh, and that's going to keep those lines super crisp. Uh, whereas if you use a power sander or a, a palm sander or something like that, then you'd kind of round them over because those the, the beds of those sanders have uh, some give to them. And so they, they tend to round over those edges real bad. So, <clears throat> so using a planer... Um, is, is definitely the right tool for this job. It keeps the, the edges super, super sharp, which is what you want. That, that's what looks really, really good. Um, another important thing about this part is planing in the right direction. So if you are planing against the grain instead of with the grain, uh, or uphill or downhill, or however you want to describe it, you can tell right away. You get a bunch of tear out. Uh, and so, you know, I was, I was moving from one side to the other here to make sure I was planing in the right direction all the time for uh, each panel. And it did change from panel to panel. It's not always easy to tell which direction you should be planing from. Okay, got them all cleaned up and finished, and now it's time for the, the finishing process. Uh, I did something a bit more complex than I usually do here. I wanted the walls to be darker, to kind of remind me of a, of a library or a castle or something like that. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the New York Public Library a little bit. So I'm starting with some aniline dye here, just dissolved in water. Uh, always dissolve that stuff in water. I find that if you dissolve it in uh, denatured alcohol, that it, it dries super fast and it's very easy to make, a, to make it look really, really blotchy. So uh, if you dissolve it in water, it looks super, super good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I ended up using about a quart of water uh, to an ounce of dye. And you can see they're just strewn across my shop here, so I had to come up with a better solution. Uh, I ended up building a rack to dry these things on out of just some scrap pieces that I had laying around. So you can see uh, this, is, this is super better because uh, you've got, now you can dry 20 or so, 25 or so at a time, <clears throat> and the width is right to be able to do the styles this way too. So that's what it looks like once the dye is dry. Uh, and now the next step is to shellac it. Uh, so I'm going to put a seal coat of shellac on. This is just as you get it from the store. I don't dilute it or, or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just uh, brushing that on. And what I'm going to do after this is apply a glaze using uh, uh, oil-based gel stain, which uh, worked great. It ended up looking really, really beautiful. So the, the shellac keeps the wood from absorbing all of that stain and really just lets it kind of get into the pores to make the the grain of the wood a little bit more obvious so i'm very sort of uh easy going when it comes to finishing uh, i think people get super uh, excited about uh you know how do you brush it and how do you you know uh, apply it and, and all that kind of stuff and at the end of the day it just doesn't matter unless you have a clean room or something like that the finish that you're going to get uh, for each of these is is the same right there's not a lot that you can do uh, and so just you know just enjoy it right so uh, this is just applying shellac uh, shellac is one of my favorite finishes because it's just so forgiving and repairable and fixable and and just easy right so uh, I just need one coat here, and so that's all I'm going to put on, times 60 panels. I work full time, and uh, so I don't have a huge amount of time to, to do this stuff. So 
I, I actually spent about 15 minutes a day, 10, 10 15 minutes a day working on this uh, because I, I just don't have time. So this whole project ended up taking, uh, you know, six to nine months to do because it just, I, I would only work on it a little bit every day if I even had a chance to do it. And so it was super gratifying to, to get it done and see the finished product after all that work. So here's the gel stain. Uh, this stuff is uh, smelly and gloopy and uh, the first time I've ever worked with gel stain, but it's got about the consistency of jello pudding. Uh, it's, uh, it's just gloopy. Uh, and so it's also really forgiving, so I just applied it here with a brush and then I didn't wait at all. I found that once you glazed it with the shellac that the amount of time that you wait doesn't actually matter much. Uh, you know, whether it's one minute or three minutes or five minutes or whatever it might be. Uh, so, you know, I just went ahead and started wiping it off right away. Uh, and I used the same rag throughout the whole process. So you can see the difference. It doesn't darken it much, but it, it does a little bit. And, and I think that that additional darkness that it adds is just really super awesome. Normally, I'm not a big fan of finishing wood, finishing of staining hardwood, but uh, I saw a YouTube video on this, and it's kind of a mission-style finish, which I think just looks super awesome. So I just couldn't be happier with how this is turned out here. Those nice sharp edges on the panels are just really, really cool. <clears throat> uh, and then once the gel stain dries, I just applied a coat of uh, polyurethane. Uh, a lot of people get way twisted around the axle around applying this stuff too, like, you know, how should you brush it on and how many strokes and are you over brushing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and all that is just a bunch of hogwash. You just, you just have to do it. And, you know, it's not, it's not super critical, right? This is not rocket science here. You're just brushing it on and that's all you're doing. And so I like to just brush it on. I don't really pay much attention to the, the brush strokes, but then once I do get it all on, then I go ahead and, and try to just kind of smooth it out like, he, like I'm doing here by just taking kind of long strokes all the way across and overlapping them. Uh, but, you know, like this is not super critical. There's no way really to mess this up. Uh, once you do finish though, you should leave it alone. So. Uh, it is a mistake to start re-brushing re once you have kind of let it dry a little bit because then it gets it gets starts to get gloopy, starts to dry, and then uh, and then if you mess with it, you will get a, a really horrible finish. So the best advice on, on polyurethane, in my opinion, is just like apply it and then leave it alone. And it will it, it'll level itself out and and, uh, and kind of take care of all the other details there. Now, if you have a clean room and a sprayer and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, good for you. But I always found that that stuff is, is way too big of a pain in order to uh, you make it worth it. Plus, I don't have a clean room. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that is, uh, that's just applying polyurethane. Uh, and this, I only apply one coat here, and it, it ends up looking really nice. So, uh, those are all the rails and the styles. So you can see those guys here. Here's all the panels that are done. Uh, and they are finally finished. So that's how they ended up looking. Uh, I think they're just absolutely fabulous. I like a, a satin polyurethane uh, finish. A lot of people like the gloss and then they, they use like steel wool or something like that to, to get it to a finish that they like. But I find that the satin stuff just ends up looking super awesome. So I pressed the kids into service here to help me kind of tear down and destroy this wall. Uh, so they're taking down the, uh, the, the molding, the baseboards. Somehow I lost the footage of them actually destroying this wall, which is a, a real shame because it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, they had a tremendous time uh, doing the demo to, to get this wall done. But they did make a big mess, and here it is. This is an exterior wall, so I've got all that insulation there. Uh, but they're just uh, cleaning and picking up all the mess and stuff. It's great having kids because, you know, you can you can make them do the stuff that's just you don't want to do. <laughs> uh, it actually took a few weeks for this process because I had to wait until the trash man came to take my trash away before I could clean even more. So, uh, and now the big day here 
is uh, applying this uh, this this board, uh, these boards, this wall. So um, this turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, just getting everything kind of fitted together, which I kind of knew that that was going to happen, but uh, it turned out that once I got the hang of it, everything was pretty fine. Um, but getting that getting the the rails to kind of fit together uh, fit into all those different panels turned out to be a big pain uh, but I actually found this little hook that ended up being the perfect tool uh, for this job and so kind of being able to reach in there and and pull these panels toward me uh, to get everything to fit together was was just what the doctor ordered but I started out using like clamps and and uh, you know I got it on and then it, I had to take it off and put it back and this was a big pain. So eventually I, I got this first one on and learned a lot in the process and then the rest of them went really, really fast. So made sure to get it nice and square. Uh, those lights I, I did hang, I skipped all the electrical because I'm no electrician here. I wouldn't want anybody to take my advice uh, or to do like I do. But uh, yeah, so that, that turned out looking really beautiful. I'm using just a pin nailer to get everything put in. Uh, and you can see how it looks here. Um, it's just looking really fabulous. Those pin nailers are great because they, they put a little tiny wire in there to hold it up. You can't hardly even see the nail hole. Um, getting all of the rails to be even with one another is an important step. Uh, and so just I have a little, a little stick, a little piece of uh, scrap wood that I'm using to help me kind of adjust the position of those things. And then just... Uh, Kind of fitting it in a little bit at a time and you can see me using that hook there to kind of pull things towards me and, and get everything to fall into place and the wall is slowly coming together each of those lights ended up i put that in the very dead center of a panel so that it would look really super good uh, and they ended up being perfectly centered uh, and just looking absolutely fabulous so i'm really happy with the way that it turned out Being able to size these panels to the exact size that I want turned out to be a really important step because uh, I have exactly the right number of panels and they fit exactly on the wall. I don't have any off sizes or anything like that. And so everything just, just fits and it's centered perfectly on the wall. And the lights are centered uh, on the wall and everything looks, just looks great. So here's what the wall looks like. Uh, I haven't done the baseboards or the crown molding yet. I plan on making those too. Uh, which is super awesome. Uh, I'm very excited about that, but that's what it looks like. It's uh, uh, really, really beautiful. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And with all the video conferencing that I do, uh, you know, having a, a cool, interesting background behind me, uh, it turns out to be really fun. A nice, nice way to, to uh, you know, have a, get a conversation going when people ask about, hey, where'd that? How'd you get that wall? And, and all that kind of thing. So that's how it worked.